And a good Monday evening live from Innovation Colorways. Welcome into Catamount Football Weekly as we talk Western Carolina Catamount football with the head coach, Kerwin Bell. From the Catamount Sports Network, I'm your host, Daniel Hooker. Looking forward to the start of 2022 football season. Our other teams have got off and running. Volleyball picked up a couple of wins over the weekend. Two and one on the year, including knocking off Wake Forest there at UNC Asheville, 6 p.m. tomorrow night over at Justice Center in Asheville. Catch that match on ESPN Plus. Hope you'll tune in to that. Special thanks and a congratulations to Mary Gable and Eden Punch already getting some accolades here in this year as they both were named to the uh, Offensive and Defensive Player of the Week by the Southern Conference earlier this afternoon. So a lot of great things starting to happen right here in Catamount Country. We're in Noble Hall right here in the heart of Western Carolina's campus at Innovation Cullowee. Come on down if you get a chance. Each and every Monday night we'll be here. We'll talk with the head coach Kerwin Bell looking back to the week before and talking about the week that it is as we get ready now coach gonna be very similar one week ago we were sitting down I was looking at the Sun as we had our Facebook live presented by Stanbury insurance but we started talking catamount football as we break fall camp and head into our season let's talk about how that camp went for you guys getting back to campus how big was summer access this year and having so many of your guys here between the first and second summer sessions well, it was really big, especially a young football team like we have, um, you know, 60 new players out of the 120 on our roster. Uh, to get those guys in there in June and July is a credit to our administration, you know, our chancellor and our AD, um, Alex, and our chancellor, um, Chancellor Brown. Uh, to get them back on campus and to have them there for those two months has been big. We went right into camp in August. Um, our guys had a really firm um, grip of what we wanted to do offensively, defensively with the schemes. And so I think it gave us a real big jump on the, on the camp. And um, I thought we had a really good camp. You know, the first scrimmage was pretty good, and I thought we got better in the second one. Um, and then just the other day, we had sort of a game simulation last Saturday, and I, everything went real smooth. So, um, you know, our kids are ready to go hit somebody else and go play somebody else. Like we put them in every position, ever, sort of every situation you can put them in. Uh, had them compete, um, winners and losers. So it was a very competitive camp. But um, I think we've covered about everything. Now it's just time for us to go out there and do it on the, on the field in a, in a real game. Coach, uh, again, and don't forget you at home for, for tuning in. You can drop us a question here into the comment section. Antoine McDowell already says good luck this season. He drops in the first comment. Always like to highlight whoever gets in there first on us. Uh, again, you can drop that right here on the Facebook Live as we're here at uh, Innovation Cullowee here in, in Cullowee, uh, North Carolina, right in the heart of campus right here in Noble Hall. But, Coach, you talked about the, the two scrimmages. And again, we, we saw in those both sides having some success, other side putting the other one in some difficult situations. But what did you like most coming out of those scrimmage? Was it that competition that both sides came out with some wins and things they could, could build upon? Yeah, I think that's what you try to do as a head coach. Is you, you know, everybody talks about ha having a great offense, a great defense. You want a balanced football team. And uh, we're definitely a more balanced football team coming out of this camp than I thought we were last year. So we made some improvements in those areas. I think we're better in all different phases of the game. Um, but yeah, it was a great competition. You know, when you have a great defense and great offense and you start balancing this stuff out, that's when you get better because you compete against each other every day. And I thought our kids did that. Um, you know, we had a lot of competitive situations and, and situational stuff. Um, but I feel really good about, you know, we're, I think we're on the right track. We've got some young kids who can win championships with. Now we just got to make sure we coach them up and develop these kids into being the kind of team that we want to be here in the, in the future. Well, let's talk about this season, Coach. You obviously open up this weekend on the road in the low country of South Carolina as we head to Charleston Southern. Back-to-back -back weeks on the road. Charleston Southern, Georgia Tech, two tough tests to open up. Then Presbyterian before you get into conference play as you get a look at the schedule on your screen there. Talk about this opening, uh, again, two road games back-to-back -back before you get to finally come home. Is it better to open up on the road? Would you rather open up at home? Does it really matter? You're just ready to go, right? <laughs> well, we just want to play and hit somebody different. I, you know, our guys are ready. Um, I think it's going to be a great challenge for us. Charleston Southern, I think, finished third in the Big South last year. They're a good football program. Um, so it's going to be, they play extremely hard. So it's going to be a great test for us. So it'll be a great test for our young kids, you know, to go on the road first game, 12 o'clock start, which is your really, uh, you know, early starting time for us. So all those challenges as a head coach, you're trying to make sure that you uh, prepare your team for. But I really like our, our opportunity. I think Carlos, you know, he had a chance to start a couple games last year at the quarterback position. So we feel very good about him coming in this year and, and being sort of that stabilizing force, uh, sort of like Rogan was last year for us. And um, 
I think our, our kids have worked extremely hard this offseason. We're in pretty good shape, I think. And uh, now we've got to go out and just play a really good football game. Some of the questions starting to roll in. We'll keep an eye on those throughout. Again, if you have a comment or question for Coach, just drop it in the comments section here on Facebook. And again, Coach, one of the things everybody asks coming out of camp, health of the squad. How are you going into this opening week when it looks, you look down the two deep, you look at the roster, how are you feeling about the health of the team? Um, you know, we've got some bang, guys banged up a little bit like everybody does, um, but nothing really serious. You know, um, we lost a, a freshman linebacker, uh, Christian Murphy, who's going to be an unbelievable player. He, he probably tore his, I think he did tear his ACL, so he's out for the year. But um, other than that, we, we've got some guys banged up here and there, but we're a relatively health, healthy team, um, you know, going into game week. So we feel good about that. Um, you know, there's going to have to be some young guys that step up and play here early in the year. Uh, but we feel very good that we've had a really physical camp, uh, really worked on stopping the run and being able to run the football better on the offense. And um, even with those, those physical practices, our kids came out of it in good health and we're ready to go. I know a lot of people asking about Calvin Jones, who was injured uh, coming back into this year. A lot of preseason accolades heaped his way. He's one of those guys that is uh, on the shelf right now for you. Yeah, Calvin, you know, All-American, preseason All-American. We're going to miss him. He got hurt back in the spring. Um, he's coming off of an ACL re uh, reconstruction surgery, but he's way ahead of schedule. He may play for us later in the year. Uh, Caleb Fisher's another guy we thought was going to be a big time player for us, and he's he hurt his knee um, also during the spring. So uh, those two are going to be guys we miss. But other than that, we feel pretty healthy coming out of camp and, and ready to go. How much of that has to do with what you're doing outside of football, meaning in the weight room? Everybody wants to know what are you doing to get bigger, stronger, and faster during the off season coming out of spring ball, coming through the summer. Talk about what you've done with our athletic and our sports performance team. Well, I thought Coach Jacobs has done a great job. You know, our first phase in our off season was to gain weight, get bigger, get more powerful, get, get more explosive. Uh, we had guys gain, you know, 10 to 15 pounds in an eight-week cycle. And so uh, our guys worked extremely hard. He, he really got on them about eating properly, you know, eating six meals a day. For these young kids, we can't do that anymore, Hook, but young ones can. I try. <laughs> I try. It just doesn't go to the same place, right. I think. But, you know, these young kids, as much energy they're, they're, they're um, putting out there and, and the way they work, um, they need to eat properly. And, and because of that, a lot of them gain weight, gain strength. We're a bigger football team. We look better on the hoof, that's for sure, than we did last year coming off the bus. So we'll see where that leads us to. But um, I think it's, like you say, coming out of camp, we had some nagging injuries here or there, but for the most part, we stay relatively healthy, and I think that's from the, the off-season work that we put in. Uh, passing that eye test, getting off the bus can sometimes put you up seven to nothing without even doing anything sometimes, right? When you get off the bus and you look <laughs> the part. Well, I hope so, because uh, <laughs> we do look, look good. You know, we got some big, long defensive backs. We got a lot longer. I think in defensive line and the offensive line, we got bigger and longer and more athletic. So uh, we're getting there. We're still a ways from where we need to be, and, and but, um, you know, I just hope we continue to get better in those areas. But um, we've, got a, we've got some really good athletes that can go and play. And I think on defense is really the big key. We've got a lot more depth this year. We can rotate guys. We don't have to depend on guys playing 60, 70, 80 snaps. We can go and, and um, you know, rotate a lot of guys who, who can help us win games. And so we've, we've done a good job in that area. Now we've got to continue to let these guys grow and develop. And I think we've got a chance to, to do some really special things there. Yeah, we got one of those questions from Randy Stallings was asking about the uh, sports performance program with what Coach Jacobs and his staff have been able to do for your program. Now, let's start talking about some of our football team. You, you hinted upon it there at the start. Everybody wants to know who's going to be your quarterback. What's the guy going to be calling the signals? What's the guy pulling the trigger in the backfield? And you got a good one in Carlos Davis. You mentioned him a couple of starts last year. And good competition with some young guys behind him to help find that number two battle. Well, we really never came out and just pronounced him as a starter because it was sort of always assumed uh, by us if he, if he continued to develop during the offseason, we knew he was going to be our guy. And sure enough, he, I tell you what, he's worked extremely hard. He took the game more serious, I think. He knows this is his opportunity to play in a really good system. He understands, though, that he's got to really be knowledgeable in this system to be really good at it. And that's what Rogan had, so, had, had accomplished so well was that he, he knew the ins and outs of this system. And Coach, so Carlos seen that. Carlos wants to be that good mentally and physically in this system. And he worked extremely hard this off season, the summer, this camp. He's had great, you know, he really separated himself from everybody else. So we feel very comfortable about him leading our football team here the next two years. But um, like you say, got some young, talented kids behind him. Cole Gonzalez is a guy who's a true freshman who probably will, will be the backup this week for us. 
but it could be changing. There's guys that uh, Samuel Cornett, you know, Casey Link, Link, Linky, uh, um, you know, a lot of guys. Parrish uh, is a kid who's a walk-on. Him and Brody, they have really showed up as walk-ons. So we got some guys who can play, uh, but we want to keep Carlos healthy and make sure he's the leader of our football team. And one way to make it easier on the guy calling the signals and is the guy he turns and hands it off to. I think you got a couple of good ones in the house there. You talk about you bring back T.J. Jones. You've got Jalen Williams adding that extra upperclassman leadership out of Toledo. And you got a couple of young studs coming in there. Talk about Desmond Reed and uh, uh, Kamori Reed and Corey Reddick. Corey Reddick. There's yeah. a lot of guys coming in that are, that are just extremely talented. Well, Travell's the ultimate pro. I mean, he can do everything extremely well. You know, he people ask, you know, you don't have the home run hitting ability um, that some of these other guys does, but he can – he can pick up blitzes at the crucial times. He's a great inside and outside runner. Um, he catches the ball extremely well out of the backfield. So him and, and then Jalen um, uh, Williams, who we got in from um, Toledo. He's a graduate uh, from Toledo. He's got two years of eligibility. He's a dynamic player. He's a kid that when he came out of high school, he had committed to Florida. And they dropped him late. He went to Toledo and started there on defense. This is a phenomenal athlete, over 200 pounds. So him and Travels, they'll be really two great three down backs, three down cop backs that we can we can have. And then, like you say, Desmond Reed and some of these young freshmen are going to be explosive. Um, you know, Desmond's a four three kid, and he shows that he's very he's very physical also. So we feel like we've improved not only our offensive line but our run our running backs as far as being able to be more um, you know be more balanced on our offense as far as running the football. When you talk about those uh, wide receivers out there that are able to make plays, starts off the top with a guy you know pretty well, Raphael Williams, but he's got a lot of company back there. Losing Calvin Jones hurts, but you got guys like David White Jr. coming in that can help spill. And I tell you, A.J. Colombo has been really impressive during camp. Well, we're glad we was able to go get David White. He was in the portal. He played for me at Valdosta State. He played as a true freshman, started as a true freshman on our national championship team. Very talented kid. Now he's grown into a man. He's 6'3", 210, 15 pounds big wide receiver who can really run um, and losing Calvin really has made him a valuable asset for us because now he can step in in that spot. Uh, we also picked up the kid um, in, in recruiting sincerely out of Clearwater, Florida. We think they'll be, I mean, he, he might have next level kind of top talent. So, um, you know, him, um, then like you say, um, Poppy's just the ultimate pro. Um, you know, we got to find ways to get him the football. And so Raphael's, they'll be a big, intricate part of what we do. And, and then you start going down the list with, um, you know, Toler, who's a kid who we think has got a lot of ability, Keegley, um, and then um, Terrence Horn mm -hmm. is a kid who we had at South Florida who's a 10 200 meter. He He's can really return, run. And good in the return game. Great too. returner. Had two kickoffs mm -hmm. against Georgia Tech as a true freshman. So we've got some talented kids there. Uh, and so we, we're hoping that that group still continue to grow. Got some veterans like Raphael and David, but we are going to depend on a lot of young freshmen, very talented kids. We, I think we recruited five of those guys hook, uh, last season. We brought in, we thought, some very talented guys, DD and some of those guys that still play Z4. So we feel very good. They just got to continue to grow and grow up. But as they get more and more experience, we think they don't be a, a really valuable asset for us as we go into the season. We could probably do a whole show just on the wide receiver room with uh, DeAndre Tamarez and Jalen Trezado, some of the names that we're going to be hearing early and often throughout this year. And so let's talk about the tight end position. That's been really key. I and mean, if anybody that watched the scrimmage has got to see, tight ends were a big focal point of that offense. And not only in the, in the throw game, but more so in the run game as well. Well, we like to be able to use 11 personnel, which is a one tight end, you know, three receivers, one back. And because we can go to all kind of different, you know, we can get a regular tight end formation and make people play a three-man service. You can go put, and if you got a versatile one, you can put him out and he can be the fourth receiver and go, and without having a substitute. And we think we have that, you know, with AJ. AJ's a former receiver. He's 6'3", 245 pounds now. He's grown himself into a man at tight end position. Uh, can really run. We think he's going to be a very valuable asset for us across the middle, in the middle of the field. We think he's going to be a great matchup for us. And now he's really improved his blocking from last year. He, we redshirted him last year. He transferred from Tusculum. And we think he's going to be a big asset. Clayton Bardell's a pro. He's been around a long time. He's also a very versatile player. And I tell you, Braden, Braden um, has done a really good job for us, a, a walk-on who was a freshman for us last year as a sophomore. 
And Braden is going to be a really good football player. He's been physical all, all camp, and he's going to get in there and play a lot for us also. But it all starts up front, Coach, and you're anchored by an all-conference guy in Tyler Smith. Christian Coulter, in my mind, should have been an all-conference guy. You got guys like Samari Sadler who saw a lot of action last year. Blake Whitmore returns from injury. He was starting at center for you. Uh, again, a lot of those guys up front got a lot of playing time because of some injuries, and you're trying to build that. But that offensive line group can be really important for you. Well, that's the great thing about, you know, one good thing about getting all those injuries. I think 10 of our top 12 offensive linemen missed time last year. But because of that, we got a lot of guys some experience. We got a lot of that experience coming back. Uh, we think two of the best tackles in our conference we have uh, in Tyler Smith and, and Christian Coulter. So we feel very good. We also brought in some guys. Um, you know, Neelan is a guy who came in um, right here from Pisca, And um, he, we think he's going to be a really good player for us. And, uh, and then we got Antoine Fan back, who we think is going to be a dominant player at guard also who's had some injuries and missed most of last year. So we've got better in that area for sure. We're longer, we're more athletic, we're more physical. Now we got to just stay healthy and let these guys grow and, and sort of play together and become a, a, you know, a very good unit in one. Offensive mentality still play fast, score faster, hit the gas, all those things. That's still what you're talking about? Well, listen, I, they put that scoreboard on for one reason. It's who <laughs> scores the most points. So we ain't trying to hold on to the football and chew up the clock. We're trying to go score touchdowns. So if you see us, we're up 30 to nothing. We're trying to go up 37 to nothing. Uh, that's just our mentality. We want our kids to be aggressive and have that mentality. And, um, and yet we also want to make sure, we, one thing you'll probably hopefully see this year is we're going to be a little bit more balanced with our run game and throw game. You know, Rogan was so good. He'd been so experienced in our system. We put it on his shoulders a lot of times last year to win the game. Uh, hopefully we don't have to do that with Carlos, especially early. Now there will be some games where he's got to go win for us, but we want to be more balanced, keep the defense more simple, and, and give Carlos a chance to really shine at quarterback. So our run game has got to be, I think with the, the offensive line that we've added, with those running backs, I think we can be a lot more balanced football team, which will help us in the, in the long run. All right, well, we're just getting started. That's phase one, three of them in the game of football. We still have defense and special teams to talk about, and we'll look at Charleston Southern as we continue here from Innovation Cullowee, our Catamount Football Weekly. Do want to take this one opportunity to send our condolences along to the Busey family. Lost a good friend of the Catamount program and a good friend of the Western Carolina community with uh, Jeff Busey. We do send all our thoughts, our prayers, and our heartfelt condolences to the Busey family as we continue here tonight dedicating the show to Jeff Busey here this evening. Much more stay with us when we get back. We'll talk defense and special teams. Catamount Football Weekly live from Innovation Culloway. We're here to win championships and we're going to bring guys in who we think can win championships. We're going to bring guys in who have the attitude to win championships. We're going to bring guys in who have that love for the game. Hey, tune in. We live here and grow here, Catamount Country. At WCU, you can lead the way or lend a hand. You can wander, create, inspire, connect, and dare. The only thing you can't do here is go it alone. However you show up here, we'll show up for you. And then you can show us what it means to live Western. Welcome back to Innovation Cullowee as we continue with Catamount Football Weekly with Western Carolina head football coach Kerwin Bell. You saw the promo about season tickets. You need to be a part of Western Carolina. We're trying to set a record for the most season tickets ever sold, and we're on the cusp. We need you. If you've already bought season tickets, thank you. And we're looking forward to having you here in Cullowee. Now call a friend and have them call a friend. Nobody wants to miss out on what's going to be an exciting 2022 campaign here in Cullowee as we get ready to get the first home game coming up in a couple of weeks on the road this weekend at Charleston Southern. We'll talk about the Buccaneers as we go forward. But, Coach, let's continue our talk about our team. Again, don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, drop them in there on here on this Facebook Live. We'll try to get to them. But let's talk defense. 
we ended the conversation with the offense up front, talking about the offensive line. Let's start the conversation with the defense right up there in the trenches as well. That's one of the areas you said we had to get better, especially, as you mentioned, getting better against the run. Run defense had to start up front in the trenches. Talk about what you've been able to do defensive line-wise. Well, we think we've got bigger, just the guys going through the all season. We really uh, made it mandatory they gain weight and gain strength and get much bigger there. We think we've done that uh, with the returning players like Marlon Alexander and, and JQ and, um, you know, those guys who, um, who, who were here last year. We've added some guys. Uh, one is Ronald Wilson, who was here last year but didn't play any. Uh, he's gotten a lot better shape. He's a very powerful 330-pound kid who, who we think is going to help hold point. We added a guy, Desmond Barkley, who's banged up a little bit right now, but he's a big, powerful guy that can hold point. Um, so we got some guys that we think can go in there and give us great rotation. Um, Brandon Smiley, a guy who we re recruited out of um, prep school, a freshman who has really come on this camp. Um, so we, we like the guys that we have in there. We have more numbers. We're bigger inside. So now we got to be able to go out there and establish. We got knocked off the ball way too much last year. We got to play more on the, the opponent's offensive side of the ball and, um, and be more disruptive. And that's what we're trying to, to gain. I think Coach Coaches Brian has done a great job uh, in coaching our guys, our D-line coach, our new guy. He's really done a really good job of teaching them guys to be more violent, be more uh, disruptive. And hopefully that's going to show up in these games as we start the season. Moving back into that second level, let's talk about your linebackers, and it's an overhaul. We've had some questions saying, how is that group coming together with only one guy having played for Western Carolina and Giovanni Ricciardi, who had a great interception, really physical play. I think he had an interception and recovered a fumble all in one scrimmage uh, earlier this preseason. But talk about that linebacker room. You've got some guys, some transfers that have come in to give you a little more experience, and a couple of young guys. Hayward McQueen, it's in that linebacking core that's been really impressive. Well, I, I thought we was going to let me go back to those ends on that defensive line. I, did, I left them out because okay. K.J. Milner, we think, is going to be one of the best players in the FCS. He should be. He's that talented at defensive end. Um, Timmy Jernigan's been in here but with, um, has been here behind him, and so we think Tim should come in and, and, and really play well on both sides. We'll play him on both ends. Uh, Micah Nelson's been banged up a little bit in camp, but he's gained about 40 pounds. He's up to 255 at the defensive end, bandit position. And then we got some talented freshmen behind him. Justin Wallace, who came in as a freshman. Um, Malik. Uh, Malik Richardson is a kid that played quarterback yeah. here when we got here. Was he's, a played, he's trying to play every position on yeah. the field, I think. I think we found a – we call him the freak. I mean, he's 6'4", 220 pounds. We put him at bandit now to rush the passer. He's the one had so much speed to our defense. He is unbelievably fast at the defensive line position. So we feel really good about the guys that we've got all across that board. And then, like you said, linebacker, we had to go out and get some veterans to come in here and play. And uh, we feel like we've hit, hit it with, um, with the, the guys we brought in, you know. Um, E.J. Porter, a uh, kid played at Coastal Carolina, a four-year uh, four guy who played for them, graduated there. Va, I don't know Va's last name. But La Matafal. Um, I, I think I got it. That's close. <laughs> so Va is a – man, both of those are going to play that mic position, and they're so intelligent. Great guys, great character, man, and they will hit you. They're both about 235, 240 pounds, big linebackers. We feel really good about them. And then at the wheel position is a, a freshman. He came in in January. We've been talking about him sort of all off season. Is Hayward McLean, uh, McQueen. Hayward is a dynamic tackler and, and great linebacker. So we're we're going to start. He'll probably start as a true freshman. And then right behind him is Ed Jones, who came in with Vi from Texas as a junior college kid. So we've remade that whole, that, that sort of Mike and Will position. And we think we've done a really good job with some veterans. Now we got a lot of young kids behind them too that we think is going to give us some depth. So uh, we're excited about that position and, and the young guys that are coming on. That's going to give us a lot of quality depth. I hope we got a lot of questions about, again, the linebacking position. Again, it's kind of the quarterback of your defense. And those guys, again, a lot of them coming in new into the system, but they've all really been very athletic. We've been, been really impressed with what we've seen out of that linebacking room and uh, Cody Edwards working with them. But let's talk about maybe the most experienced position on your defense, and that's going to be your secondary. 
the cornerbacks and the safeties lumping them together. I know with uh, Coach Scales, the D coordinator, and, and Larry Murphy working with that group. But again, you've got some experience out on the corners. Talk about a Rod Gaddison, a Cam McCutcheon, and you got Andreas Keaton coming back in. He's got the experience and the All-Southern Conference thing going for him. But you've got some experience there. A guy like Jalen Floyd back transferred in from Lehigh. You've got some experience in that secondary to really help out. Experience, we got some depth there, you know, with some veteran guys coming off the bench. We got some young freshmen who, that's probably the most talented freshman area that we sort of was able to recruit was that defensive backfield with safeties and stinger position and corners. And so we feel very comfortable. This group here has got to sort of carry us hook. So, you know, if we got to commit more to the run and put these guys in a stressful situation, we're going to do it. We, we think they're that talented. When you look at them out there on the field, they look like an FBS secondary. I mean, they're 6'3", 6 6'2", 6 long and athletic and big guys. So we've got to put it in their hands to go win games and to give us a chance to, to be really good on defense. Them guys have got to play extremely well. They're very talented, a lot of depth there, and now we got to go prove that we should be one of the best secondaries in FCS, I believe, with the kind of talent we've got coming back. So um, that, that, that's sort of the four secondary guys. One spot is sort of that linebacker secondary guy, that stinger position. Nick Lewis is the guy we brought in from junior college. I mean, he looks like an FBS player. He's 6'2", you know, 200 pounds. Big, long, athletic guy who can run. And then Skylon Thomas and Bam Bam, a freshman, we think is going to be an unbelievable player in this conference for the next four years. So we've got some talented kids, or some veterans and some younger guys. And they're going to have to carry this defense as this young up front team, you know, the, the down linemen and all those guys continue to get better. I'm going to have to get a, a list going of all the nicknames to keep up with everybody is. Bam Bam and Buddha and Dirty and you name it. We've got a bunch of nicknames, the all nickname team coming up. We'll have to have a special just our nicknames for this squad. We've got a lot of good ones out there. Don't forget a guy like Poppy, another one that's got a nice little nickname thrown in there. But coach, we've talked offense, we've talked defense. Let's talk the third facet of the game, which can be at times one of the most important. That's your special teams. You've got to be able to win the special teams. I think with what Curry Webb set for you in place coming in, really set the, the stage for Coach Norris this year. And I think you've got a great group right off the top with a, a, an all-conference caliber punter, an all-conference caliber uh, place kicker, a couple of them, and an all-conference caliber long snapper, all of them right there in those specialists. All, um, all of them specialists have played a lot of snaps too. You know, that's the, that makes you feel comfortable as a coach. You've got guys that got experience in those three areas, deep snap, punter, and kicker. Um, so we feel good about that. Then you go look at the other side as far as returners, we got some unbelievable dynamic. I'm talking about we're three, four, five deep in the punt return game and the kickoff game return game. So to me, the way I look at it, these veteran kickers, place kickers and punters do their job. We get some great dynamic returns. It's now just don't be left up to this hook. It's always left up to this. When you're a talented team like we are and got some talent that can, you know, that are backups, third string guys who can go play special teams. I mean, we should win that special teams battle. The only way we want is if they don't take ownership in what they're doing, they don't play their butt off, because that's all special teams is, is playing 100 miles an hour and playing with your hair on fire. If we can get them to do that every week, which is what we preach, then we should be able to go win that part of the, the, the equation, because we just got the veteran kickers, we got the great explosive returners, and we got some athletes who, can, who are long, who can run, and go tackle the football. So I'm very, I feel very good. Coach Norris is doing a great job. We gave him a lot of time this, this camp. We've worked on every phase of those games in special teams, and we think we're ready to go play a, a good game in that area. Yeah, I think so. And I think the one thing that really spoke volumes to me was you're saying, you may not be starting this week, but you may be on special teams. You may be starting on special teams. Own that role this week. It's not forever. It's just for right now. And I think the guys really bought into that and really taken ownership of my job this week is to be special teams, whatever. And they really bought into that as far as the outside players, along with your specialists who know their important role. Well, listen, I think one thing, I've always heard coaches, you know, they talk about at the start of the season, that here's our starters, here are our backups, here's the guys who are going to play special teams. That used to bother me sometimes because, first of all, who tells that starter he's going to be a starter for 11 games? You, that, nobody's guaranteed that for him. He's got to go produce, especially when you got great players behind him. And that's as a head coach, I tell people all the time, that's my number one priority is create depth, create competition at every position. I think we're starting to do that. So now... Week one, there's a role. Somebody's a starter, somebody's a backup, somebody's a great special teams guy that week. But that role could change every week. And so it keeps everybody on their toes. 
is make sure as we have great competition, we reward guys who play well, and that's the way it's going to be throughout the season. All right. Well, we've talked. We, we can spend all night here talking about 115, 118, whatever it is now, total roster for this squad, trying to get everybody's name thrown in there. So many talented players to talk about. We've got a lot of them in there. We'll continue to talk about that throughout the course of the season. Again, each and every Monday night right here, Innovation Colorway. But up next, we'll turn our attention to Charleston Southern. We've talked about the Catamounts. Let's look at our opposition. We're going to talk about the Buccaneers coming up on the other side of this quick timeout. Come back with us right here to Innovation Colorway in the heart of the Western Carolina campus on Catamount football weekly hey tune in hey check it out it just came here Welcome back to Innovation Cullowee as we continue with Catamount Football Weekly, Episode 1, Week 1 of our weekly coaches show. Hope you'll join us here live on location every Monday night, 6 o'clock. You saw the promo again, season tickets on sale now for the home games in Cullowee. Hope you'll make the, take the opportunity to come out, get season tickets, secure your seats for all five home games, get your parking again, parking being charged for on campus so close to the stadium this year. And while you're at it, why don't you just join the Catamount Club as well because that'll give you a great opportunity to get the better parking and better tickets opportunities. So again, a lot of those things you can do through CatamountSports.com. Join the Catamount Club, get your season tickets, and of course get your game day parking and get here to Cullowee each and every Saturday. Five action packed. We've got so many things going on with each and every Saturday. We're going to white out Whitmire for the first home game as we welcome Presbyterian. We'll have the SoCon 100th anniversary team recognized, the first performance of the Pride of the Mountains marching band, all of that and much, much more. You definitely want to be here for that first game. Again, 3.30 kickoff here at E.J. Whitmire Stadium, Bob Watersfield in Cullowee. Coach, this weekend, though, we open up first things first, back-to-back -back road games to start the season. You head to Charleston, you head to Atlanta. I guess first and foremost, we're trying to get off to a hot start in more than one way. Trying to get a 2-0 record to start the year, a hot start in that direction, but hot when it comes to going down to Charleston. The low country temperatures predicted to be in the 85 to 90 range. I know you as an old Florida guy, you love that. For us mountain Look, folks, we're, we're, we're scared of that. <laughs> you're trying to make it too hot now. That, I, last thing I got was 84. All right, well, we'll go with your no, <laughs> We don't want to be 84 and, 84 and holding. Yeah, the, they're, they're telling us down there, we talked to some people, you know, um, that, that sort of like here, you know, our August has been sort of, I know it was compared to last year. It was a lot more humid last year. They said down there it's sort of been like that. So hopefully the humidity is not as bad. But, yeah, it will be hot. You know, three things I worry about that first game is the 12 o'clock start, right? Your team getting up. We've already practiced that twice this, all, this camp. So we put them through eating at 8 o'clock in the morning for pregame meal and then playing at 12 o'clock with our scrimmages. So we think we've got that taken care of. Uh, the other thing is is the heat, right? we got to make sure our team's ready to go play. we got to make sure they're hydrated on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday getting ready for the game. Make sure we don't have guys cramping up and guys who can finish the game. Uh, and then the last thing is these young kids. We're going to depend on a bunch of young kids. It's a 12 o'clock start on the road. How are they going to react? So a lot of things like that run through my mind that night and day. But um, we've covered everything. I think we're ready. Um, we're, you say 2-0. and oh, we're, All we're worried about is being 1-0. Oh. we gotta, we got to win this football game on the road. This is a really good football team. They've lost some good players just like we did, but um, they got a good good core coming back, a team that finished third in the conference, so I think in the Big South. So they're, they're a good football program. They play extremely hard, and so that's going to be a big challenge for us. Yeah, finished third a year ago, picked third in the preseason, tied with Gardner-Webb this year, a team that we saw a season ago, talking about the rutted Bulldogs down in Bowling Springs. And you listen to Coach uh, Autry Denton talk about his squad, and the one thing that really rings true, very similar to what I hear when, when we talk, and that's you got, you got a lot of young players, but they're our players. They're guys that want to be here because it's us. They, they're ours, 
their commitment, and I think the commitment level that Coach Denton's talked about, something very similar I've heard you say about this squad here at Western Carolina. Yeah, you can tell he's really preached, you know, just the way they play and how hard and, and, and how hard they play for each other. They're a really disciplined football team. Um, the good thing about it is they did lose their quarterback, who was sort of like us, uh, but he was very dynamic. I mean, he, he accounted for a lot of yards last year for them. Uh, their D tackle is at East Carolina now. I'll tell you how good he was. He went in the portal, so they lost him. So they've lost some very important parts, but they got some really good players back. Their linebackers, the defensive end, uh, the guys on offense, they got some guys who can really play, and they play extremely hard. They're very intelligent. So this will be a big challenge for us to go there on the road uh, and, and win a football game. Well, let's talk about some of those guys defensively up front. We've seen some of the highlights that include some of those. You talk about uh, uh, Garrett Saig up front in a linebacker position, 96 tackles a year ago. Anton Williams is one of those big D linemen with a lot of pressure that he can apply up front. Ombre Kennedy, three picks in the secondary a year ago. When you talk about those three guys at the three level, that was three all-conference guys preseason in the Big South. Yeah, and they've probably been in top 30, I think, in FCS and defense the last two or three years. They've been really good on the defense side of the ball. They, um, they don't give a lot, a lot of rushing yards. We're talking about being balanced. You know, they really do a great job against the run, uh, play extremely hard. Like you say, them linebackers there and that safety, they feel in a hurry. So we've got to get our eyes up. We've got to make sure we get on uh, a helmet on a helmet. Don't, don't let them guys run around free. And we've got to get some big guys on them, helmet on helmet, and make sure we get some movement and create some running lanes because we need to be balanced. They, um, they really play fast. They get after you up front. And so we got to be a balanced football team and not have to depend on just dropping it back and throwing all the time. Uh, you talked about a new quarterback going in this year. Get a good battle. They said through the spring it was a good battle. It didn't name a starter. Went through the entire fall. Named a starter uh, right off here going into this week, really on their two deep. It's the only time they've really done that, talking about Charleston Southern. Does it make it difficult to scout with a different quarterback? Are they maybe going to try to change to go with the, the, the assets that quarterback brings to the table? Well, uh, you know, the two we know of aren't, aren't near as, as athletic as far as running the football as the one they had last year. He was very dynamic. He's at North Carolina State now. Um, very talented kid. But they do throw the ball extremely well. So, you know, you don't see them probably be a team that sort of like us want to be a balanced offensive football team. They really like to run the football out of the spread and out of the sort of 11 personnel, which we do a lot. But you can see them play action and off of that and throwing the football down the field this year with the quarterbacks they have. So we got to be ready. You know, we got to take away the run. We got to make sure we stop that because I think that's going to be their objective is go in there and see, you know, from our history, especially last year, can we run the football at them? And we got to be able to stand up and, and be physical and make sure we uh, dominate the line of scrimmage. And we got to take one of those away. And hopefully it'll be the run game, make them start throwing it. And then our veteran secondary, I think, can really big, play a big role in, in the outcome of this game. And Caden Jordan, outstanding wide receiver back for them. What ended up uh, 53 catches, 750 plus yards a year ago. But a veteran offensive line, I think it really starts around their center position. They got some other guys to fill in around, but very veteran along that offensive line as well. A lot of snaps played. Maybe not be old in terms of years played, but a lot of snaps that they played. Yeah, I mean, they did a really good job last year. You know, East Carolina, take that game. They're up 14 nothing in that game against East Carolina. And um, I think that's how the kid, the D-tackle, played unbelievable. And he's now to East Carolina. Uh, went in the portals. They lost him. But, man, they competed their butt off against some really good football teams. Like I say, finished third in the conference. I, I think he's done a tremendous job, uh, Coach has, and, and really has them guys playing hard. And so it's going to be a big challenge, which is what we want. We need to go play a, a really good football game, and um, I think we're, we're ready to do that. Our kids have had a great camp, and I think they're ready to go show what kind of football team we can be this year. Well, Coach, normally on Mondays you are off. You have an off day, which is why we picked this day, but a little bit different of a week. You guys have got a home and only practice, kind of reintroduce the game plan that you started with last week. What does this week look like for you as we get ready to go to Charleston? Yeah, Mondays usually our day off. But uh, what we did, you know, we had a little a simulated game uh, on Saturday morning. And then after we got through with that, we uh, went straight and gave them off uh, for basically lunch on Saturday all the way till today. Uh, they went to class today, but they had no meetings. We'll bring them back tonight at 7 o'clock here uh, in helmets. So we'll just get them, it's a little run through, just to get them to hear the game plan again. We'll call out all as much as we can so they can hear it. They can go line up and run it. Maybe it gets air, you know, we're not going to really hit or do anything. 
but we just want to make sure we throw the ball around, get out, to get everything out of our system, make sure mentally we're back into it. So tomorrow, because I don't want to start back tomorrow, because usually when you give them a day or two off, that first practice is terrible. So this is the practice really to get us ready for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be our first installation again of our game plan. It will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we've got to have three great, game, three great days to get us ready for that game this Saturday. Again, they always say you might play on Saturday, but you win the game early in the week. Is that correct? We always say, hey, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we want to be the most prepared football team in the country. And, and that's all you do is focus on those three days. Be the best prepared football team in the country. If we do that, then Friday we feel very comfortable. Saturday we go have fun. And if we do those things and just keep it that simple, then, um, then we'll have a chance to go play a good football game. And, of course, Labor Day weekend in the Charleston Low Country, a lot of Catamount fans are going to make their way out. Want to see a lot of purple and gold in the stands as we head down to Charleston Southern this weekend. I hear it. There's a lot of people wanting to go. Yeah, like you say, it's a long weekend, so uh, it's going to be great to have uh, some people there cheering us on. And, you know, I told, I think I was talking to Alex today, our AD. I was like, he asked me how I feel about the season. It, different seasons are different, you know. Uh, I really don't know about this football team. I, I feel very good that they, they're very close. They love being around each other. They're very talented, but they're so young and we're so new. They're 60, the whole, over half the roster is new. So um, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to have a, a sideline pass there to be able to see this football team. Hopefully we'll come out and go play extremely well. There's going to be some ups and downs. We're playing a lot of young kids and new guys, but I think for the most part, we've put them through a great camp, and now they're ready to go perform. Uh, looking forward to that again. 12 noon this Saturday, Buccaneer Field down in Charleston, South Carolina. We can catch that game on the Catamount Sports Network. 11 o'clock airtime, 12 noon kickoff. That game also will be on ESPN+. Plus. If you can't make it down to the low country, check out the Catamounts there. Coach, we're going to let you get out of here so you can get to practice. We'll see you next time, next Monday, right here, as we continue with more on Catamount Football Weekly, one week from tonight, as we continue this season, get things off on. Hopefully we're talking about a big Catamount win coming up next week. Hope you'll join us here at Innovation Cullowee. Special thanks to everyone that made it out tonight, and special thanks to you for watching. For the coach and our entire staff, I'm Daniel Hooker saying so long for now.